Good morning and welcome everybody here at the Red Couch at PCIM in Nuremberg. My name is Michael Brunner, I'm the editor-in-chief of the E&E &E magazine. And uh, throughout the whole trade show we are talking with important people about important topics that are moving the industry right now. You can watch us here live on stage or you can watch the videos later on at um, our YouTube channel or via Facebook. And right now I would like to welcome Dr. Sven Klarker, Vice President Technology and PM ABB Semiconductor. And we will talk about high power semiconductors and smart grid. Welcome and good morning, Dr. Klarker. Thank you for welcoming me. The term smart grid is often used and not always with the same meaning. What is your definition of a smart grid? It is not only the smartness is required, you also need to be able to do something with that smartness. And currently the, the issues that we have, for example, on a windy day with the uh, wind power vastly harvested in Denmark and northern Germany um, and with lacking transmission capacities, it's not really smart to turn off the, uh, the generators. On the other hand, on demand side, um, it should be possible one day to cope with the, uh, to also vary the demand according to the energy fluctuations. Currently it is still, uh, the, the energy needs to be there when it's required and there is no control about the requirements of that demand. So a smart grid for me is a grid that autonomous, autonomously balances uh, the requirement, the power supply and uh, also supports on uh, the demand side. So what are the main differences between the smart grid and the conventional grid in, like in terms of architecture, efficiency, etc.? Well, nowadays we're used to transmitting the energy from high voltage to low voltage. And uh, with more and more regenerative energy being fed in at distribution voltages or even at, at low voltage levels, the direction of the current is not really always clear. If you imagine you have a, a short circuit on a medium voltage level, up to now, it is sufficient to just turn off the, the high voltage infeed. Now, if you would do that with lots of regenerative energy being fed in, the current may continue flowing, being supplied from our lower voltage levels. Um, also, with the, with the increasing fleet of uh, electric cars, one of these days, you will want to charge your car at, a, at whatever public uh, plug-in station, and you will want the energy to be billed to your own uh, home account. So it's two sides. One side is the, the, the top side, the transmission side, where all protective schemes need to be refreshed and re redone. And on the other hand, it is the possibility on demand side to uh, program the, uh, the, um, the energy usage in a way that you charge your battery when the energy is rather cheap and available. So you already mentioned the renewable energies. They are an important part for the power supply, becoming even more important in the future. But they are, as you already have mentioned, not always necessarily well, well produced where you need them. So what is ABB's approach um, to power transmission, to get the energy where it's needed? Well, I, I strongly believe in uh, HVDC transmission. I think we will see uh, an HVDC backbone being built to connect regenerative energy sources where they appear to a uh, sort of uh, energy storage like pumped hydro in the Alps or also to uh, battery storage supported by an SDC station. So I think the, uh, the, the regeneration needs to be coupled to some sort of energy storage and where you can build these energy storages depend on the geographical situation. And besides the challenges of transmission, integration of renewables into the grid is, generally speaking, a major challenge. How do you deal with that? Well, at our, at our booth, uh, we show a solution to integrate uh, wind power and solar power into weaker parts of the grid. You can combine static VAR combinations with battery energy storage and so compensate the short-term fluctuations. And also increase the available uh, amount of short-circuit current because you also need a high short circuit current in case, th in case that a failure arises to be able to turn off for, for all those breakers to, to switch. 
So power electronics and high power semiconductors are an important part of these solutions, I guess. So how important are they really regarding the smart grid? Well, it, it starts with feeding in. If you imagine, I mean, solar power is DC power. Now, in theory, it is possible to feed in DC power via rotating equipment, be it a DC motor with an AC alternator, but it wouldn't be really efficient. And uh, wind power, as you know, is also basically variable speed where you need the power electronics to implement some sort of a frequency control. Um, HVDC and, and static VAR compensation is basically impossible without power electronics. So if you want to, we can turn the question around and ask ourselves, if it wasn't for power electronics, we wouldn't probably not sitting here and discussing about the smart grid. Yeah. So if you want so, power electronics is the muscles of the smart grid to be able to do something with your brain. And what characteristics of high power semiconductors are most important uh, for the use in the smart grid? Uh, well, I think it's pretty diverse. In an ideal world, you would, of course, have a power electronic switch without any losses, but that wouldn't work. So if you think about uh, high voltage transmission, there the, the uh, current, I think the topology that offers most benefit in terms of cost versus efficiency is a multi-level topology. And for those, uh, for those converters, it is beneficial to have a good trade-off between blocking voltage and on-state losses. Yeah? Whereas, so there's large voltage IGBTs or, or IGCTs would be beneficial for such applications. Whereas if you think about the other extreme, um, uh, feeding solar power, there, it, there uh, uh, low switching losses working at very high uh, frequencies is beneficial for the efficiency. So it's completely different. On wind power, it's kind of in the middle. There is a medium frequencies in the range from a couple of kilohertz. Um, but there, there's additional requirements on power cycling capability of the semiconductors, which are of increasing importance. So it's very diverse. There is uh, enough for all us power, power semiconductor manufacturers. So, and you already said the high power semiconductors are very important. How can they be uh, improved? What are the next steps you are working on to improve your semiconductors? Okay, we, we have a focus mainly on very high power devices. So we continuously increase the power rating of our Prespec IGBTs. We will uh, come up with a new generation of insulated, high power insulated modules using VIGTs and uh, new module topologies. And last but not least, we're increasing the size and the power rating also of our IGCTs. Finally, I would like to ask your personal opinion. How will smart grids develop within the next 10 years? What do you expect personally? Um, I expect that we will, we will see a, a massive investment into, the, into an HVDC backbone. I would see that we will have more and more uh, um, pumped hydro stations going to be increasingly and also built up on power. We will have uh, battery energy storage, we will have thermal storage, and it will be all, as I said, connected by, uh, by an HVDC backbone. In turn, we will also see changes on the demand side. So you will be, you will, in all parking lots, you'll have charges for electric cars. They will bill the energy bill to your home account. Um, and you will also be able to, to, uh, to control your, your, to program your home appliances in a way that I think everybody, all of us will be a small energy trader to make, to just take the benefits out of the fluctuations. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Red Couch talk about high power semiconductors and smart grids here at PCIM. Dr. Clarker, thank you very much for being our guest. It's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you everybody for watching and listening. We wish you a successful trade show. And if you are interested, you can w watch this video and all the other Red Couch talks um, on Publish Industries YouTube channel later on. Thank you very much. <laughs>